Granny Johnny for a boy who's just had measles. That talk's slow, Granny. That makes it even later. I mean, it's fast. Honest it is. Well, just let me finish this chapter. No, dear. Besides, Shakespeare's easier to understand the right way up. A lot of things are. I shall have to shut the window. Just until your father's meeting is over. What are they quarreling about? Peace, dear. It's a meeting of people interested in world peace. Now, good night, darling. Good night, darling. Good night, Granny. Dear, I was afraid John's meeting would keep you awake. My dear, nothing's ever kept me awake. Not even John at his noisiest. Nothing would induce me to sign such an impossible resolution. Harold, you're making yourself quite ridiculous. You're talking absolute nonsense. Don't shout. It wasn't my proposal in the first place. Good night. It will agree to it, I heard you. Oh, don't be ridiculous. Nobody agrees. Fat-headed idiot. Oh, no. Yes, they've gone. Again. What do you mean again? Same as last time. I made sandwiches. Those ruddy fools started fighting before I even had a chance to read the minutes of the last meeting. What on earth are they going to do with those? Why not send them to the natives in Rhodesia? Rhodesia? The last letter to the Times was unusually concerned about them. Well, why did it go to China this time? It happened to be Angola. Sorry. Those idiots don't deserve good coffee. I hate trying to work with people who haven't got the guts to know what they do want. Doubt is something that's never bothered you, has it, John? Hmm? can be a very real thing. Why entertain it, then? Comes as an uninvited guest. Kick it out. You're very metaphysical all of a sudden. What's coming over you? Doubt. About me? About working for peace? No, John, of course not. Never about your ideals. What, um... What are you that doubts about? Us. Us? Well, what way? Just us, it's all. Oh, John, I've left my hat. Oh. Hey, you'll come to the next meeting, won't you? I'm afraid I got something on that night. We haven't fixed the night. Hmm? Well, I, I'm afraid I'm going to be busy every night next week. In other words, you won't come. Well, I'd rather not. Good night. Good night. Quarter-witted half-wit. Well, that's the last meeting we'll have here. That's what upset you tonight, darling, isn't it? No, I didn't mind. Oh, that's all right, then. Unless the noise kept Johnny awake. Johnny? Oh, yeah, how is he? He goes back to school tomorrow. You said you'd take him to catch the 10.30. Tomorrow? Oh, darling, I can't. Would you mind taking him? Johnny would mind. You, you haven't seen anything of the boys these holidays. What do you mean? I took one to the pantomime. That was the Christmas holidays. Oh, was it? Oh. Oh, well, I don't think they enjoyed it much anyway. Pantos aren't what they used to be. A lot of things aren't. Oh, I don't know. Kids don't change. Don't they? How would you know? Because, dear, strange as it may seem, I happen to have been a boy. Boys don't change. I listened to them this time. School stinks, the French master stinks, food stinks. Thank goodness there's something unchangeable in the world. John, perhaps they're right. Perhaps food does stink. Darling, all school food stinks. It's a jolly good thing. Makes them appreciate their home. If they've got a home. Oh. Well, don't you think this is a home? Well, the house seems so empty. Great. 
Let's fetch them back from school, then. Let's not think about the boys' own good. So you were thinking of their good when you sent them away. What was I thinking about? Your own peace and quiet. They, they were becoming a nuisance to you round the house. All right, dear. Have them back. Fetch them back from school the next week. They're soon enough. Well, wait, Johnny! Nothing I can get you in town, dear? I don't think so. Thank you, Mother. Stella, dear, you made a much better wife for John than he deserves. The fact that he is my son doesn't prevent me from saying you've married a self-centered, absent-minded maniac. Absent-minded? He was that before we married. I rather loved him for it. Ever since John adopted pacifism, I've never known him so impossibly belligerent. Perhaps. No, I'm not doing it to punish him. Doing it. Perhaps I ought to go away for a bit on my own. Have you told John? No, not yet. I suppose I've just been trying to work up the courage. I rather fancy courage is the one thing that John does appreciate. Do as you think best, dear. John, you're an idiot. Well, only five more minutes of freedom. That's my KLW. Oh, I had a first card from him. To be this term. Uh-huh. Has he said anything to you, Johnny? No, he wouldn't tell me. Mm. Expect me to fix a date by now. Hope so. Doctor said I need his tonic. You've been in bed all the holidays. Me? Not likely. My symptoms didn't develop until the last day. What symptoms? Red spots on my chest, eyes inflamed. How did you manage that? I had to look straight at the sun. The spots were easier. I did it with a hairbrush. Your parents fell for it. I had a temperature, too. Oh. How? Oh. It's psychological. You put the thermometer on the radiator and think of something horrible. Here we are. His plane. Where? He doesn't keep his plane down here. Want a bet? How much? Five quid. Let's make it five thousand. Look, there's Aiki. <laughs> no, it's not. It's Charlie Adams. I know his bike. I bet it's Aiki. How much? You and me two and six for my last bet two months ago. Don't change the subject. How much? Truffin. Wasn't that Aiki, Charlie? If it was, I'll have to report him. The airfield's out of bounds. smiling face in class this week. Yes, sir. I've been at home, ill. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. But I shall expect you to make up the work before Thursday. Thursday, sir? Thursday, Peyton. Glad you're back. Thank you, sir. 
Good to smell old Sykes again. Come on, better report back. Did you have a good holiday? Well, not so bad. Except for my bronchitis. Oh, yes. Dr. Skilling was sorry to hear about all of you. I'll tell him you've arrived. He may want to speak to you. Speak to us? What about? Well, nothing in particular, I imagine. Well, then. Don't bother him. Oh. Don't be in a hurry, boys. Thank you, Miss Betts. We were just reporting back, sir. Well, come along in and tell me all about yourselves. Close the door, Hamden. Yes, sir. Come closer, boys. Well, I take it that you've all recovered from your various diseases, indispositions, complaints, etc. Yes, thank you, sir. Splendid. And you're all set and eager to carry on the pursuit of, uh, well, whatever it is you've come here to pursue. Yes, sir. Peyton, what on earth are you looking for? Nothing, sir. Peyton, is this yours? No, sir. Are you sure? My parents would never permit me to chew gum. Oh. Well, then, naturally, you would never indulge. You don't think it's mine, do you, Peyton? No, sir. Then how do you imagine it got there? Hardly sporting, is it? To blame it on a woman. Adam did, sir. Adam. Oh, for that Adam. Are there a good precedent to follow, Peyton, in the light of what happened to him later on, don't you think? It's rather hard to explain. What is? The Old Testament? No, sir. What I was looking for, sir. And what was that, Peyton? A microphone, sir. A hidden microphone. I was only trying to protect you. Protect me. From what, Peyton? Never know, sir, do you? You're quite right, Peyton. I never know. I also never know where that imagination of yours will take you. Yes, sir. Only it isn't imagination, sir. It's standard practice to have microphones in offices. Where is it standard practice, Peyton? I saw it at the cinema yesterday, sir. Yesterday? Last week, sir. Before I was taken ill. It was very useful. Your illness? The microphone, sir. In case anyone is trying to get anything on you. So you're trying to protect me, Peyton. Well, that's very loyal of you. Yes, sir. And I presume that if anyone were plotting against me or against the school, I could count on the loyalty of all of you. Oh, yes, sir. Is there a plot, sir? Well, perhaps plot is not quite the right word. Uh, tell me something. Before you went on a holiday, did any of you happen to receive one of these? Haven't you? No, sir. Peyton? No, sir. Hampton? No, sir. Perhaps the Latin might give you a clue. Ad astra per angusta, which means, Peyton? Me, sir? Yes. You want me to translate? Well, it's not too difficult. Oh, no, sir. Ad astra to the stars. Yeah. Per angusta? If I know what it means, sir, that, that doesn't imply that I'm implicated, does it? No. That was what was holding me back, sir. Oh, well, in that case, let Peyton finish it. Uh, but it's Daventry's turn, sir. To the stars, no matter what the difficulties. Excellent, Daventry, excellent. Skinny! What's the meaning of this? We're playing a game, sir. The playing fields are not outside my study. Come in, Hamden. I want to talk to you. Yes, sir. Go to your room, Richard. Yes, sir. 
All right, boys, we go. Hi, Max. Hello. Hello, Johnny. Hello. What does he want? Operation Birdcage. Got a notice of a meeting. I'll bet young Skilly gave it to him. Is that why you were chasing him? He's trying to spy on us. I'm just kidding, but I was wondering where you are. Yes, Miss Betts. Listen, I've got something important to tell you. Mother and father had an awful row last night. <laughs> it's not the first time. But what about? Father's going to take us all away from school. Oh, gosh, when? Next week. That's what they said. Next? Yes, Miss Betts. I'll tell Ike. See you later. Oh, uh, Hamden. Oh, come on, boy, come on. You're not afraid of me, are you? Yes, sir. Why? Have I ever caned you? Except when you deserved it. No, sir. I see. You're afraid of me now because you've done something that deserves a caning. Is that it? Not yet, sir. Not yet? <laughs> then you're planning something. Planning something? Not I, sir. Yes, that's right. It's your brother, Icarus, that does most of the planning, doesn't he? Usually, sir. As far as you know, Hamden, and I don't ask you to betray any confidences, is Icarus worried about anything just now? The only thing I know that he's worried about, sir, is the... the position of the individual in current society. Oh. Does that worry you? No, sir, I'm more the fascist type. At least that's what Icarus thinks. Well, it is the fascist type that you were pursuing my son just now. No, sir. Has that anything to do with it? Did young Skilly, did your son give you this, sir? Is that the way the school thinks of my son? As an informer, as a spy? School, sir? I can't say, sir. Well, you'd better get that out of your head, do you understand? Yes, sir. And I'm to take it that that has no connection whatever with, uh, with Icarus's present worries. What makes you think he's worried about anything, sir? He hasn't looked at all well this term. And that's because he's on a fast. A fast? <laughs> but for what reason? An experiment. A calorie consumption in relation to mental activity. Oh. Oh, dear, 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 dear. Well, that's, that's, that's very bad. That's very, very bad news indeed. <laughs> I'm afraid this school couldn't stand any increase of mental activity on the part of Icarus. I know that I couldn't. I think you'd better warn him about that, Hendon. Yes, sir. Is that all? I hope so. I most sincerely hope so. For your sake, for his, and for the school. All right, Hamden, you may go. Thank you, sir. It just came from Maxie. Tell yeah, what you say. School stinks, food stinks, old Skillingworth stinks. See what I mean? Skilly's son is a fifth columnist, always carrying tales. Don't want to go on to university. University stinks. Wants to go to Sandhurst. Sandhurst? That's a brilliant idea. But he thinks peace stinks. What's this about Icarus? Seems he started on a five-day fast. A fast? Now what? Now that of his experiments, you ought to be used to Icarus by now. Shocking writing. Johnny was very strange when I said goodbye. He kissed me twice. You don't think he overheard us last night? Well, he couldn't possibly have understood what we were yelling about. I didn't myself. Didn't you? I don't think you did either. What's come over you, darling? I told you last night. No, you didn't. You just said something about having some sort of doubts about something or other. I, I, I think you're just tired. Maybe you caught something. That's right. I'm suffering from chronic indigestion, migraine, gastritis, and I'm probably sickening for measles. It can all be explained away physically. Well, there's no need to be sarcastic. I don't even know what we're talking about yet. Well, don't let that stop you. It doesn't usually. I think the Americans call it marriage fatigue. Marriage fatigue? Well, lucky we haven't both caught it at the same time, isn't it? Oh, don't let it get you down, darling. We will get over it. Oh, to be in England now that April's there. And whoever wakes in England sees some morning unaware of the lowest boughs in the brush of the Now, uh, there, 
Australian neighbours are a trifle early today. What seems to be the trouble, Brown? Excuse me, sir. Those aren't valid, so have you paid Victor's? You seem to disagree, Smith. They aren't Victor's, sir. They're Canberra's. They carry the hydrogen bomb. Now, that's very interesting. But this happens to be a class in English poetry. Hamden, will you proceed, please? At the lowest boughs and the brushwood sheaf, round the elm tree bowler in tiny leaf, while the chaffinch sings on the orchard bough in England now. Hmm. Not bad, Hamden. Any questions? Please, sir. Yes, Warren? If the hydrogen bomb falls near here, sir. If the hydrogen bomb falls near here, Warren, you probably won't have to worry about the low mark I'm giving you for asking a stupid question. Any more questions? D-Day minus five. You say you found this in the changing room, Kirkland? Yesterday afternoon, sir, after practice. Well, that seems to indicate that D-Day, whatever that is, is still in the future. Aquila known Caput Muscas. Does that suggest anything to your fine classical mind, Kirkland? A fair translation would be, an eagle does not concern himself with the insects. Not much help, is it? Well, gentlemen, I just thought that I ought to warn you that something seems to be afoot. Though I don't think we need to take it too seriously just yet. You're playing with fire, you know, sir. Maybe, Ellipsy. Especially as I suspect that the eagle in question is our old friend Icarus. Hamden has always been a disturbing influence. In my opinion, sir, you'll be doing the school a great service by getting rid of him this time. Well, we, we may have to do that, Sykes. I might add that I'll do everything I possibly can to avoid it. After 35 years of teaching, I still prefer the eagle, well, to the parrot. Listen to this, will you? It's for the Anglo-Asian Society. <clears throat> but now, my friends, let me warn you that there can be no lasting social gains in the East until the position of woman has been changed. The position of woman where? In the East, of course. You mean Kent, Essex, Suffolk? Darling, you weren't listening. I said this was the Anglo-Asian Society. Sorry. Did Uncle Darcy get the Brahms Quintet to us or to you or to me? Look, if you don't want to help me, dear... Go ahead, go ahead. <clears throat> Woman must be made to feel important, not only to her husband and children... Excuse me, John. Would you say that again? Yes, of course, dear. Woman must be made to feel important, not only to her husband... Is that funny, dear? Yes, very. Um, do you want Beethoven's third or fifth? What are you doing? Sorting the records. Some of them are mine. I suppose they are. I might want to take them with me. Where? I don't know yet. Oh, good heavens, Stella. What have I done now? Done anything, John. Haven't been a drunkard or beaten me up or been unfaithful. I'm just going away. But why? I want to go now while we still respect each other. I think you've gone quietly mad. 
Oh, if it helps you to think that, don't let me stop you. Maybe in a way I have. That's why I can't stand it any longer. Hey, hey, no, hey. Don't touch me, John. Leave me alone. Perfectly all right. Sally, you're all muddled up. Now, would you like me to get you some bread? No, I would not. I wish you'd stop implying there's something wrong with me. Well, isn't there? I, I mean, there must be. I'm perfectly sound in wind, in limb, and in mind. Sorry I went emotional on you. You're not really serious about this. Yes. Well, you've thought about the boys. Of course I've thought about the boys. They're not going to cut my throat or banish myself to Timbuktu. I'll be around somewhere. You want me to uh, renew your subscription to the library? Is that important? It's overdue. in Switzerland, the year after Icarus was born. You haven't changed much. I have. Good holiday, wasn't it? That was when you broke your leg. Was it? It was the worst holiday we ever had. I wish I knew what this was all about. I suppose if I worked up into a flaming row, put on a wild bit of hysteria and ran sobbing violently out of your life forever. Oh, be reasonable, can't you? Just what I'm being. I'm trying to be decently grown up. About what? About being a cipher. About being ignored. About, about having no apparent significance in your life. I don't, I don't know what you want from a wife, but whatever it is, I don't seem to be able to give it. Maybe it's sex. Maybe it's interest. Now, Stella. You've now stared me for too many years. My dear, I'm probably a completely inadequate human being. I'm sure any man is when confronted with the complexities of the female mind and the female nervous system under a strain. My nerves are all right. I am perfectly calm and cool. I know, dear, I know. You're controlling yourself. That's what causes the stress. I am not controlling myself! Fine, fine. Let yourself go. That's just what you need. You are the most frustrating, pig-headed, insensitive hulk of complacent masculinity any woman ever had to suffer. You're a jobber now. A what? A jobber now! Jobber now, nice. You're not even a jobber now. You're a... <laughs> For you and I together to make a song. Now let's get this clear. Sorry, Mr. Hare. Dr. Skillingworth, there happens to be a front door to this house. I have been ringing the bell for five minutes. Do come in, Dr. Skillingworth. I'll open the door. Let me handle this, then I've got something to say to you. Well, what's the trouble now, Dr. Skillingworth? If the school needs more money... The subject of my visit is not finance. Then would you be so kind as to arrange an appointment for a more convenient hour? Or perhaps the subject could be handled by post? As you wish, Mr. Hamden. Well, I should have preferred to talk to you first, before expelling your son. Expelling? Which son? Maximilian. Maxi. Please, come in, Dr. Skillingworth. Thank you, Mr. Hamden. Will you please explain yourself, sir? I know, Mr. Hamden, that you are an avowed pacifist. But as for your son, the school bully is a phenomenon with which I am familiar and with which I can cope. But with the single-minded, berserk, bloodlust of your Maximilian, or as he's known throughout the school, battling Maxi. What have you done to him? For the moment, I have locked him in his dormitory. What for? This morning, one of the boys was viciously attacked and knocked unconscious. But Emma Max is so gentle. Was it a little boy? It was my son, Richard, who was attacked. What did he attack him for? Your son seems to have conceived the idea that I'm using my son to spy upon the other boys. And of course, that couldn't possibly be true. It could not possibly be true. Your son, age 15, was attacked by my son, age 14. And you come all the way here breathing vengeance and threatening expulsion. <laughs> really, Dr. Killingworth? I came here because both Max and Icarus are ceaseless troublemakers. And you, of all people, are in a very weak position to condone unprovoked violence. Me, of all people? Oh, I see. 
If you're not very careful, Dr. Skillingworth, I'll knock your block off. That'll teach you something about my brand of passivism. John, John. Mr. Hendon, there's no use in bending words. I felt it was my duty to come and talk to you personally. Obviously, I made an error of judgment. Oh, no, you don't. You don't wriggle out of your responsibility as easily as that. I sent you a docile little boy <laughs> with, as I remember it, a rather sweet disposition. <laughs> Within a few hmm. months, you've turned him, as you ought to be believed, into some kind of holy cross between Sugar Ray Robinson and Dracula. The atmosphere and background of Ferndale School is a comparatively moral one. But the background of his home, however... If you mean to imply, sir, that I... A pacifist. A pacifist who threatens to knock people's blocks off. <laughs> now listen, you... you pedagogical poppinger. Please. Excuse me. Hello. What? No, Ferndale. It's for you. Hello, Dr. Skillingworth here. Yes, Miss Betts. What? Shot? Who, who's been shot? Wait, I, I don't quite understand. Who's been shooting who? Hello? Hello? I seem to be cut off. I seem to... Give it to me. Give me. Hello? Look, here, look, we've been cut off. Yes. Well, hurry up, please. Who's been shot? One of the masters, Mr. Sachs. Oh, how awful. Yeah, what? What do you mean, out of order? It was all right a minute ago. Well, well keep after it, please. Okay, I, I must get a taxi at once. No, I'll take you in the car. I think you'd better come, too. Why? The shot was fired by your son, Max. I'll get the car. You leave a note for Mother. Excuse me, I'll get my things. <laughs> That means they've got off all right. You'd better get on down to the station and see if old Skilly's on the train. Okay. I say, Lucy. Any luck? No sign of them anywhere. Their bikes aren't in the shed. Have you tried the pavilion? We're going there now. Oh, and get the exchange from the call box in the village and tell them our phone's dead. Did you find Dr. Erskine? He's let Mr. Sakes know. Says it's not serious. Maxie shot him in the... I know. And after you phoned, you'd better meet the London train in case Dr. Skillingworth caught it. What did the old man say? Curly, this is not a laughing matter. I get cracking. Do you think the old man will have to fire him? I said get on. I hope not. Nobody likes Sakes much. <laughs> right in the ruddy... Curly! <clears throat> Look. Curly, you see, Miss Betts, we may be sitting on a powder keg. Young Peyton's generation's a very restless one. Let me know if you find anything. editorial meeting. But I got his secretary, quite a decent old stick. She's going to send down a reporter right away. Right away? You clock potter, I told her not till this evening. Sorry. Oh. Who, who is it? Warren. Old Skilly wasn't on the train, but I saw Curly, and he thought he might be coming by road. Okay. Go to the north wing and wait for the signal from the main gate. They're bound to come that way. You'd better get up to Skinny's office and wait there. As soon as he arrives, say you want to confess. Confess? Why me? You've got to make old Skilly think that the whole show was just to let Max escape from his room. And that the boys are on their way home. And that you're the only one in on it. Yes, and I'm the only one that'll get a beating. Peyton, I'm ashamed of you. You have the chance of a lifetime to fool old Skilly about where the boys have really gone. And you're afraid of a little whacking. Might not be little. So what? We're all sunk if it doesn't succeed. Go on. Better get up there now and tell Miss Betts you want to see Skilly. All right. But I'm jolly well not going to confess about cutting the telephone wire. Get on with it. He's here, just coming up the hill. Skilly and the bloke and the lady. All right, don't get excited. It's probably their parents. Next meeting before prep.
I've no idea when you'll be back. If you really want to wait, you'd better sit down. Thank goodness you've come. How is Mr. Sykes? Dr. Erskine reports that it isn't serious. I want to see Max. Oh, this is Mr. and Mrs. Hamden, Miss Betts. How do you do? Oh, that's not possible at the moment. I think we can make an exception. What do you mean, Miss Betts? Where is the boy? He's gone. gone. They've all disappeared. Icarus, Max, and Johnny. Disappeared? No, they can't have. I'm terribly sorry, Mrs. Hamden. But boys don't just disappear. Well, they're not in any of the school buildings. Well, then we must find them. Might they be hiding somewhere? Couldn't we send out a search party? Mrs. Hamden, I shall be better able to answer these questions after I have made my own investigation. Oh, come on, then. Let's make it. Mr. Hamden, this is not your home. This is a school of which I am in charge. A master has been shot. So I gather. Did anyone see the alleged shooting or know where the alleged gun was obtained? Pete, Mr. Hamden, that these are questions which I shall exact. Pete, what are you doing here? Oh, he was waiting to see you, sir. I think he knows something about it. That wouldn't surprise me. In here, Peyton. I'm sure I shall find out everything very soon now. Meanwhile, if you and Mrs. Hamden will wait here as patiently as you possibly can. Now, don't worry, Stella, dear. The boys have probably gone home. I'll, um, ring Mother. I'm afraid that's not working. Would you like to sit down, Mrs. Hamden? Sit down, Peyton. In the armchair, Peyton. Well, now, Peyton, you think you can throw some light on the unfortunate events of this morning? Yes, sir. Good. I hope so, sir. You may proceed. Yes, sir. I'm waiting, Peyton. Oh, yes, sir. I was in the plot, sir. Oh, there was a plot? Yes, sir. It was to rescue Maxie, sir. Rescue him? Am I to understand that you approved of the conduct for which he was being punished? It was a fair fight, sir. Young Skilly been asking for it, and Maxie gave it to him. That was what we all thought, sir. Of course, it was bad, like he fell on a stone. What? But that wasn't Maxie's fault, sir. It was a fair fight, honestly, sir. All right, all right. Now, what part did you play in this work of rescue? I created a diversion, sir. A diversion? I fell down at the appointed time and wriggled about with horrible pains in my stomach. To distract attention? To create a diversion, sir. While Icarus and Johnny got him out. That's why I had to howl with pain. To drown the noise when they broke the window, sir. Oh, this is nothing whatever to do with D-Day. D-Day? Day, yes, sir. That means it was purely a family affair, apart from yourself. I should think that would be very plausible, sir. Oh, indeed. <sighs> Peyton, do you know where the brothers are now? Oh, no, sir. I should imagine they might have gone home. And the revolver? Where did they get the revolver? Oh, it wasn't a revolver, sir. It was a pocket blunderbuss. Icarus made it. He's very good with his hands, sir. And he made it? Where? Oh, well, here, sir. In the maker shop. During the useful work period. In the best interest of the school? Well, of course, sir. Icarus has the good of the school always at heart, I would say. Oh, that's a beautiful thought, Peyton. Well, yes, sir. And the bullets? Oh, it wasn't a bullet, sir. It was a point two ball bearing. Not really dangerous, only a bit painful. He says some pains are necessary. I'm greatly relieved to hear that, Peyton. Now you're going to tell me that Icarus also made the powder in the chemistry class. Oh, yes, sir. He's very good at chemistry. I suppose his parents were a bit upset. You're just full of beautiful thoughts, Peyton. Oh, thank you, sir. Found it in the flower bed. Yes. Do you mind if I uh, see just that? a minute. Oh, this is Mr. and Mrs. Hamden, Curly. Oh, yeah. You've got three fine lights there. You don't know where they are? No, ma'am, but they'll turn up. Yes. Would you mind if well, I... Oh, have... I'd best show it in there first. I'll show you. There you are. A mere toy. Be careful, Mr. Hamden. It might be loaded. Soon find out, sir. May I have it, sir? Empty. Been fired. We gathered it had. A lovely job, sir. You should be very proud of him. If you had some powder here, I could show you. I have neither powder nor ball bearings, Peyton, though, of course, I can't answer for Mr. Hamden. Has your investigation got you anywhere, Dr. Skillingworth? Have you been able to find out anything from this boy? You have nothing more to tell me, Peyton. No, sir. 
Think carefully, Peyton. Remember, honesty will be taken into account when I come to assess your punishment. Nothing more, sir. Very well, Peyton. You may go. Now, look here. Just one I... moment, Mr. Hampton, please. Tell me, are they all right? Oh, they're supersonic. You mean they're... they're... Well, they're all right. Thank you. The telephone's been fixed, sir. The wires have been cut quite close to the school. Thank you, Miss Betts. May I? Hello. Uh, get me Deepdale 5124, please. Now, listen, Mother. There's no need to call in the police. I'm handling this. Yes, dear. Goodbye. Why not call in the police? Oh, no, I, I don't think that would be advisable, Mrs. Hamden. Well, certainly not. The publicity wouldn't be good for the boys. No, no nor for the school. Well, what have you got to worry about? I should think every boy in England would now clamor to gain admittance. A school way of taught to make guns and gunpowder, where a pupil actually achieves the schoolboy's dream of shooting one of his persecutors. Oh, oh, it's irresistible. You're sitting pretty. And you? Can't you see the headlines? War and peace among the Hamptons. Pacifist progeny pe pedagogue. I think you're contemptible, both of you. You're not thinking about the boys at all. They're in trouble. They need help. Do you realize what a state they must have been in to have done a thing like this? And you sit there squabbling about trivialities because you're afraid you might get your names into the papers. Well, Stella, is it... I'm going to the police, and I'm going to the papers. Sorry, I must forbid that, Mrs. Hamden. May I have the keys of the car? No, Mrs. Hamden, I don't think you're being fair to your sons. I'd hate to say I know them better than you, but I, I feel certain that they do know how to take care of themselves. Peyton has implied that they've gone home, and I think he knows. Why not wait just for a few hours? All right, I'll wait for a few hours. If I may look in their rooms and talk to some of their friends. At least we might find out why they left. Oh, but of course, of course, Mrs. Hamden. You may even find something that the rest of us have overlooked. <laughs> yes, yes, certainly. Will you excuse me for a moment now, please? Come on, Sarah. Yes, Dr. Erskine. Oh, good. Oh, good. Tell Mr. Sykes I'll be up to see him as soon as I possibly can. And... Oh. But, uh, must you fill in a certificate? Well, I mean, publicity and all that. Nobody is asking you to falsify anything, Dr. Erskine, but why not describe it as a ball bearing instead of as a bullet? Oh, look, why not a foreign body lodged in the thigh? Yes, accurate and yet unrevealing. All right, thank you, Dr. Erskine. Goodbye. You know, we oughtn't be doing this. Invading a man's privacy, it's not right. I thought we were trying to find some clue as to what happened this morning. We know what happened, dear. They obviously wanted to shoot a master. If you're properly adjusted, you don't want to shoot masters. On the contrary. When they do show up, we'll see that they're properly adjusted to the idea that when you do something, you have to take the consequence. You always have to come out with some big, abstract, worldwide principle, don't you? That you can't keep your own house in order doesn't seem to bother you. If by that you're implying that I'm not a good father... I doubt whether you're a father at all. Except in the strictly biological sense. Talking about invading their privacy. One only invades a foreign country. I'd better keep an eye on Archie's parents and see that they don't snoop around too much. Any sign of the reporter yet? No. If he comes up this afternoon, it'll ruin everything. Potter? You didn't tell them about Max shooting Sykes, did you? Don't be chronic. I just said that if they sent somebody over, there might be a story tonight. Sorry. Hold on, young Skilly. Spying again, eh? I came to develop some pictures of the match. Don't be lacking. That's just a cover-up. Wait a minute. What are you doing here? What are you doing here? We're developing pictures. But you can have the room now. Only, don't tell anyone. And I mean, <coughs> anyone that you've seen us here. Come on, chaps. We should have scared you more. He's scared enough. Okay, out into the hall one at a time. Hello, Frank. My name isn't Frank. Isn't it? That's a funny thing. You look just like Frank. You stop at his father. 
No, not recently. Not that I know of. Uh, interesting chap, Caesar. Interesting? What's interesting about him? Oh, don't you think so? Well, supposing he could talk, it'd be very interesting to hear a statue talk, wouldn't it? <laughs> think of all the things he's seen around the school. Sometimes strange things happen. Even at the best of schools. Even here. <laughs> when I was at school, a boy set fire to his room and almost burnt down the whole building. That must have been very exciting, sir. In your day. Yes. Uh, but still, not as exciting as when a master eloped with another master's wife. You're almost even getting warm, sir. What? About the story up here. You've been sent up here by the Gazette, haven't you, sir? Do stay around, sir. We may have something for you later. I'm afraid you're too late. Your friends have already told me the whole story. About the shooting? That's right. But... Carry on, Elche. Thank you very much. He's a reporter, you ass. What do we do? Better tell Daventry. Come on. with Ike. Well? Got a message. From Icarus? From all three. Where are they? Can't say. Don't know. But you have got a message. They're scheduled gum up the works. And what exactly are the works? Can't tell you yet. But what are they scared we'll do? Schedule go to the police before the mission's accomplished. What mission? It's something you especially will be proud of, sir. If we knew what the mission was, could we stop it now? That's a very interesting question. Confide it, we're not playing 20 questions. That's right, sir. So, uh, let's not worry. Huh? Shall I get you some tea? No. No, thank you. Thank you. What's your first name, Daventry? L.W. What does it stand for? Daventry. Long wave. Fair enough. Phew, my old man gave me a terrible name. Worse than Icarus. People ought to think what they're doing. This isn't getting us anywhere. That's why I thought you might like some tea. Now you tell us where the boys have gone. Do you hear? I hear. Well? What happens to people when they grow up? You'd think things would get clearer and clearer, but they don't seem to at all. Just as Ike says. Grown-up people just seem to get more and more muddled. L.W., you're forcing us to go to the police. But that's just what I mean. If you hadn't grown up in such a muddle, You'd see you'd have to trust us to find our own salvation. He could have said that, about finding your own salvation. All comes from Ike. If you'll pardon me for saying so, sir, you don't know what you've got in that boy. Thank you very much indeed. Now let's get down to the point. John, that is the point. Then you will trust Ike, won't you? Yes, if I knew what he was doing. That's not trusting, that's approving. If you don't trust him, why do you send him to boarding school? Because I imagined he would be subject to proper care and supervision. Blimey. You don't like boarding school? Ike's got a theory that boarding school's all right for the kids, but they're not so good for the parents. If you send kids away, the parents may separate. Nonsense. Mind it. Oh, I am sorry, L.W. It happens to lots of kids. You get used to it. Uh, Ike says, although it looks as though it's the parents who make the home for the kids, it's really the kids who make the home for the parents. Sort of paradox. I don't suppose you agree with it? No. Oh, uh, excuse me, sir. Come in, come in, please. Take a seat. Tell me just one thing. Do you find on the whole that the present relationship between husband and wife meets with your approval? I don't know. Thank you. Neither do I. Now, if you'll forgive us, we'll continue our search elsewhere. Don't mind him, L.W. He's very upset. You've just got to trust Ike. Thank you. Blimey. Did him get a nice kiss? What's up with you? That report has come up from the Gazette. Where is he? In the hall.
Will you be staying until around seven this evening, sir? Now, why do you want to know that? I'm the assistant editor of our school paper, sir. Why did you say around seven? I don't know. Perhaps we might have some news by then. What news? Well, it's hard to say exactly. I shall be staying in the village. What? Darling, we can't. I've got to get back. I haven't. But you don't mean to tell I me that I do you... mean to tell you. I'm not going to leave until I've got definite news. Darling, I have to be in town by... What are you writing? Just notes for our paper, sir. I'm a bit chronic in that direction. Oh, really? Lend me a pound in, will you? Now, um, would you tell me what you know about the boys if I gave you a pound for your newspaper? I couldn't, sir. Frightful lack of urge in that direction. It's against our idea for freedom of the press. Don't worry, Mrs. Handon. We're not worried. Thank you. Find out where that reporter went. But it's absolutely idiotic. Why the sudden desire to stay here tonight? It isn't sudden. But there's no reason to stay. I'm not going to leave here until I've discovered why the boys went. And my speech tonight? Make it by all means if you feel like making speeches. You usually do. Well, that's a charming way to I'm put sorry, it. I'm sorry, darling. I'm not coming home with you. Excuse me, Mr. Hamden. Have you heard anything new? About what? About the boys? Have you? What was the last you'd heard? Oh, we've just come from Icarus' study. Just a minute, dear. Who are you? Oh, that doesn't matter. I'm just trying to help. Excuse me, sir. I think you ought to know that this is a reporter. I see. Thank you. You've just been trying to get us to give something away, haven't you? Give something away? Never. We pay the market price for all information. But you haven't heard anything. The Gazette hears everything. The world is a vast network of spies, all in the pay of the Gazette. He's only trying to provoke you. Oh, you're wrong, sir. I'm only a humble servant of our great master, Truth. It is life which provokes Mr. Hamden. Life which tempts us all, even schoolboys, into actions that will titillate the jaded palates of our three and a half million readers. You've been drinking continuously for 20 years. Does it show? Only in your character. Maybe. Well, we've nothing more to say to you. But surely, Mr. Hamden, as a father, you would prefer us to print the truth about your son. The only truth you know is that I am a father and I have a son. Good afternoon. And the shooting? I'm not going to print that. That depends, Mrs. Hamden, on your cooperation. What exactly do you want to know? Well, personally, nothing. Professionally, the scrapings at the bottom of the barrel. That's where the dirt collects. The only thing you'll collect in a minute will be a thick ear. Coming from you, that's really quite a story in itself. Can I quote you? <laughs> I'm a pacifist by nature, Mr. Hamden, though not by conviction. You, it would appear, are the reverse. Excuse me, sir. There's a telephone call for you in the headmaster's study. <gasps> yes, yes, I, I, I've sent to fetch him. Of course I realize you're uh, here. Hello? Yes, mother? A telegram from the boys, eh? Well, read it, dear, read it. Arrived fairly safely. Oh, thank goodness. Well, what does arrived fairly safely mean, dear? And it, it's signed by all three. Where are they? Where's it from? Luxembourg. Luxembourg? Luxembourg. Mother, Luxembourg. listen, there must be a mistake, dear. What? Right, now listen. Don't talk to anybody. We're coming straight home. How on earth did they get there? Peyton, that news wasn't quite what you expected, was it? Yes, sir. What was so unexpected about it, Peyton? Just a... Well, they must have gone a bit off their line, sir. What exactly does that mean? Well, it seemed a bit far away, sir. Let Peyton answer, haven't you? Well, that was what I thought, too, sir. A bit off the line. A curious choice of words, Peyton. Yes, sir. Not very good at English, sir. What are you doing here? Just listening. Go right ahead. He's a reporter. Yes, I'm aware of that unfortunate fact. It's a living... Why did they do it? Why, why, why? If you will all kindly leave me alone with these boys, I'm sure I can find the answer. I wish you'd let me stay. Most no, certainly not. There's just one fact in the story I haven't got. How did they get the plane they flew? They flew? I found this in your son's desk. I went through his desk. Ah, but you didn't know what these figures meant. This is what's called a flying log. Weather conditions, ours in the air, ours at the controls. He could have set the controls all by himself. Well, he's always had Mr. Potter beside him. Potter. Potter, Potter. What? You don't mean the father of our Potter? Yes, sir. But he was very careful. Potter's old man's got this plane, and sometimes when he comes down to school... Icarus flies it. 
splendid, Dr. Skillingworth. A nice, safe, extracurriculum activity. Anyway, he's safe now. In Luxembourg. Potter's old man says that Ike is a natural flyer. That makes me very happy. Hello. What, who? The flying club? All right, what do you want? My boys steal an airplane. Don't be ridiculous. That's what I wanted to know. I'm sorry I was so hasty. Would you mind repeating what you just said, please? Where's Luxembourg? No. Like he said, to hurry back to the plane. Okay, come on. think so. The blubbing won't help anyway. Look. Sorry, but I couldn't wait. As must arrive before dark. Don't spill the beans about trip until then. Go to the best hotel and charge everything to Father. Cheerio. He could have waited. Only a minute and we'd have been here. Perhaps you were worried about breaking your neck the next time he landed. Come on, silly. It's a decent way back to that village. It's gone wrong. Looks like it. It's not like I could let anything come up the works. No, it's not like I could. Trust Ike. Trust Ike. Maybe the telegram was just a blind. Shall we get the chap starters on the bonfire? That's it. Get the chaps together behind the pavilion. You two, better phone up the other schools and tell them what's happening. Archdale Secretary Modern, St. David's and Westover. They mustn't light up till they get word from us. What about Potter? He's gone to the village to see what the parents are up to. Leave a message for him. I'll take your case. No, darling, you'll be late. I'll phone you if any news comes through. Goodbye. Bye. Meet again, my dear sir. Yes, sir. I was just reading the paper. A very estimable occupant. What's Mrs. Hamden's room number? Number seven, sir. Look at it. I mean, well, look at it. Pistol toting sons of prominent pacifists land stolen plane in Luxembourg. That's great. Author Hamden's pacifist principles are well known, but not apparently to his son. How unpleasant. Unpleasant? Well, that's a masterpiece of understatement. Here have I been slaving away for months, trying to get somebody interested in peace. The boys couldn't have known about the publicity. No? <laughs> I bet they were counting on it. They want to see screaming headlines on the, I don't know, I suppose the state of food in British boarding schools. They'll probably say they had to fly to Luxembourg to get a square meal. Icarus isn't a child, John. Does that affect his appetite? No, they've made me look ridiculous. I'm a laughing stock. And it was for them I was doing it. They'll suffer in the next war more than we will. They're too young to know about it, so you try to do something for them. Try to make life better for them. What do they do? Bring the whole darn thing clattering down on your head. <sighs> Lucky I decided not to speak tonight. Yes, Joe. So far, Mr. Hamden has not been reached for comment. 
I'll comment, all right, when I get hold of that Gazette reporter. Come in. Well? Have you any news? Hardly news, but I thought you ought to know that I've reluctantly reported the matter to the local police and telephoned the British Embassy at Luxembourg, as we agreed. What did they say? They're doing everything they can. I see. I suppose you've seen this happy bit of up-and-coming journalism. Yes, I know. It's most unfortunate. Unfortunate? You know, Dr. Skillingworth, I ought to sue you for deformation of character. Defamation. I'm a writer here, and I choose my words with exactitude. As far as I can see, you have deformed the characters of three reasonably serious-minded boys into a trio of aggressive, swaggering nitwits. For tens of thousands of years, men have been trying to educate their children, and it seems they still don't know how to do it. I might remind you, Mr. Hamden, that there are such things as laws of heredity against which teachers sometimes have to fight a constant battle. May I remind may you... May I also remind you that I share you and Mrs. Hamden's worries about the boys more than you can possibly imagine. This is a fine time to remind me of that. Mr. Hamden... You know, I greatly admire you as a writer, and on many subjects I'd listen to you with due respect. But on the subject of education, well, I think it possible that I know more than you. On that subject, there is no development which I have not studied, but more than that, I have studied boys themselves, with as much humility and as few preconceived ideas about them as possible. And one of my conclusions is this, that there is in the mind of the average intelligent boy, Mr. Hamden, scant respect for the achievements of the present-day adult world. Now, I believe it is a teacher's duty to encourage that attitude and to foster in the rising generation the conviction that they can do a darn sight better. But indeed, they must, if the world is to have many more rising generations. That's for your three sons. Well, I should like to say that, however, I may be forced to act as an administrator. I should like to say that I have always been breathlessly fascinated by them, and particularly by Icarus. Well, having said that, I hope I've also expressed something of the gratitude I feel to whatever fate decided you to send them to my school. Good night, Mr. Hamden. Mrs. Hamden, I'll ring you as soon as I have any news. Seems you have a guest. You've got a nerve coming in here. Yes, haven't I? I'd like to use your telephone. What for? Just a moment. Uh huh. Uh, Deason here. When that call from Luxembourg comes through, put it on this line, please. They found them? We found them, the Gazette. Are they all right? Have you spoken to them? Not yet. An agency message came through. Well, with all due gratitude to your paper, Mr. Deason, the episode now seems to be finished. This is a private room. We're paying for this call, Mr. Hamden. We want our money's worth. As for the episode being finished, I think you underestimate the staying power of a human interest story. By Friday, you'll be as dead as mutton. But today and tomorrow, you belong to humanity. That's enough of that. Yes? Here it comes. Yes? Hello. Yes? Hello. Just a minute. Just a minute, Max. Here's your mother. Hello, darling. Are you all right? I'm fine, Mother. I've just had a smashing dinner. We've been terribly worried. What did arrived fairly safely mean? Oh, that was the plane. Let me talk to Icarus. I he bumped it a bit coming down. He says getting up's easier, but getting down's a bit trickier. Uh, darling, Daddy wants to talk to Icarus now. Why can't he talk? Max, you're hiding something. He's been hurt. And Johnny wants to talk to you. Tell her everything's okay. Hello, Mum. Everything's smashing. I said everything's smashing. What? Johnny, you've got to tell me. Why isn't Icarus there? Where is he? Look, let me speak to Max again. She wants you to tell her. Hello, Mother. And don't worry about anything. Max, where is he? Let me have it, yes. Let me have it. Hello? Max? Daddy speaking. Uh, where's Icarus? He's gone on. What do you mean he's gone on? No. Y you mean he's gone on in the plane alone? Why? Because he had to. He just came down here to find out where he was. But don't worry. He's probably there by now. He said he'd ring you up. 
Uh, listen, Max, um, where, where, where has he gone? Well, Vienna. Vienna? But, uh, why, why Vienna? Ike, he will explain everything when he gets there. Max! There's nothing to worry about. Yes, we can spend the night. Okay, Dad. I'll wait here until you hear from Ike. Goodbye. But he said um, Icarus would uh, ring us up when he gets there. Vienna's over the Alps. Yeah. When ought he to get there? Hmm? Well, that's, uh, not some time yet, darling. <laughs> That would cost a lot. Get the rest of the chaps to muck in? Too late now. Get the news in the morning. You can't light a bonfire in the morning. We could ring the chapel bell. That's it for tonight, anyway. Come on. Soon be lights out. Around three. That would be only two in Vienna. No, four. The sun rises in the east. Yes, I suppose so. I suppose so. No, of course, must. Because I say so. You wasn't thinking. something? What? I've just decided that I don't know anything. Oh. Strangely peaceful feeling. Do you think we were wrong to send the boys away to school? Probably. I've been wrong about so many things. I'd loved it when they were at home. Noise and chaos. No time for anything. And suddenly it was just uh, you and me again, eh? We were all right when we were part of the family. I know. You don't have to tell me. I suppose I expected you to become four people. the first afternoon edition. If you have any pity on the staff, you'll dismiss classes for the rest of today. No, no, no. The boys haven't given up hope yet, so let's just carry on as best we can. The plane was last reported as seen high above the village of Schwarz in the Austrian Alps. But since then, there has been no further trace. An Austrian police official said today that if the plane has made a forced landing in the region of Schwarz, some time must elapse before contact could be established with the flyer, owing to the rugged nature of the country and the lack of communication. in it that 
you've learned before. For instance, in lines five and six, you will notice an example of the genitive absolute. Egominal, agisandrida. Under the leadership of agisandridas. Daventry. Try and pay attention. LW wants you for a meeting. I'm to take over. Okay. Give the bell a real bashing when you get the signal. Do you really think there'll be any signal? It's nearly dark. Of course there'll be a signal. And when it comes, we'll light the biggest bonfire there's ever been. It's getting late, though. Don't you trust, Ike? Well, don't you? Oh, yes, I suppose so. There is still no news of 16-year-old Icarus Hampton, the schoolboy whose flight across Europe in a stolen plane has captured the imagination of the whole country. Search patrols have been sent out from Vienna by Great Britain, France, the United States, and the Soviet Union. Yes, could you keep on trying then, please? Yeah. I'd like it. I take it you no, no news for you. Your millions of readers will have to postpone their entertainment. Those are bitter words. I don't use words carelessly. Mr. Hampton, you and your wife will have the sympathy of everyone who reads this story. The plain, honest compassion of three and a half million people who will understand your sorrow and share your suffering. Do you think people like their suffering made public? Some do, some don't. Personally, I can't understand the objection. Perhaps you've never lost a child. Lost both of mine when a liner going to America was torpedoed. Only time I ever made the front page in person. Sorry. Oh, there's no need to be. Tell Mrs. Hamden we all believe the boy will come through. Thank you. You really think he's capable of flying a plane? Of course. I don't hold with aeroplanes myself, as you know. I think they're quite unnecessary and most unlikely. But I'm sure Icarus understands them perfectly. They belong to his generation. I hope you're right. Well, another piece of humble pie. Our pet news hounds turned out to be quite human. He hasn't heard from Vienna. No, not yet, darling. Why did Icarus do it? Do you know what I think? He was worried about us trying to bring John and me together. Of all the mawkish, sentimental, conceited ideas, what does it matter to Icarus what you and John make of your lives? Mother, I do think... He has his own life to make. And it's your privilege to watch him do it and to help him. He's not a goody, goody little boy wanting to bring Mama and Papa together. <laughs> Modern sentimentality. Well, I think you might show a little more consideration for Stella's feelings. Stella's feelings? What about Icarus's feelings? I'll not have you say he died for anything so commonplace and revolting. If he died, he died in his own way. To fulfill his own purpose. I see. And uh, how does Icarus know what the right idea is? Use your loaf, Mr. Deason. What do you think religion and philosophy has been playing at for the last few thousand years? Trying to find the right idea, I suppose. Find it? They found it so often that it looks and sounds half dead each time they drag it up again. Oh. Unless you're sort of magician. Like, um, Ike. Yep. Like Ike. And, um, anything more on, uh, religion and philosophy? No, he's fin finished with religion for the moment. More concerned with politics lately. He didn't like politicians. He said they spent their whole time hacking away at trees until they forgot there was wood. Tell him what he thought about newspapers. Well, sir, he called them comics for grown-ups. Oh, really? I mean, the trouble was they took them seriously. Is this to be an obituary? Oh, no, I wouldn't say that. We must be patient. Well, 
We're all going up to the bonfire to wait. The bonfires to let the other schools know that Ike has arrived. Mm -hmm. They've got bonfires too. It's like the Spanish Armada. Come on, Chuck. Okay, chaps. Everybody up to the top of the hill to wait for the signal. Oh, excuse me, sir. Hmm? I, I was thinking maybe Ike's parents would like to come up to the hill. Yes, I think they might, Daventry. I'll go and ask them. Hey! Come on, Skilly. Too. I'm frozen. Any news yet? Not yet. Everyone's up at the hill. Seems silly to wait much longer. We're going to wait until we get the signal. Understand? Well, I'll keep you ahead of them. something he'd like to show you. Uh, now that Ike is... Well, now that Ike is not able to go on with it, I, I thought he wouldn't mind if I showed you it. It's the thing he went with. A copy of it. A sort of petition. It's been folded up. You read it, L.W. Right? We, boys, of Ferndale School, do not wish to kill the children of any other school. If at 18 we ought to think it right to kill other men of 18, then why not at 16? Why not at six? And if we feel it wrong at 16, how can it be otherwise two years later? No. When we grow up, we do not think we will consent to kill people who have been at some time children of other schools. Men cannot always see the truths of a simple moral proposition. Perhaps it's for children to lead the way. Abonesto, Wirum, Bonum, Nihil, Deteret. That, that means nothing deters a good man from what is right. It's signed Icarus Hamden. Almost everyone signed it. Why Vienna? Well, well, that's where the four powers are all sort of close to each other. Could have been Berlin. Ike chose Vienna because it seemed harder to get to. Did he have to fly? Oh, yes. He had to show people he wasn't a coward or a sissy. It wasn't against you, sir, but he thought your way was too slow. He said you had to do something smashing. Well, that does it. 
And there's nothing any of us can do that will stop this getting into all the newspapers in the world. Let me have it. You'll give it back. It's in Ike's handwriting. I'll give it back. Gold mounted in frame. I feel rather like a child who's been whipped. More in sorrow than in anger. I think any self-respecting child would prefer to be whipped in anger. Don't you, Peyton? Rather not be whipped at all, sir. Mr. Hamden, I shall go to my grave with one regret. But I never met him. But we'll give him such a write-up that the whole world will know him. And perhaps it's just cockeyed enough to see things for a moment with the vision of a child. Maybe he hasn't died for nothing. Who says he's died? I think you're very aggravating, all of you. I suppose it's only old people and young people who know what faith is and really practice it. You've lost it. Icarus has it. Max has it. Johnny has it. And so they take off to save the world with the simplicity of a saint. And you can't see that that's exactly what comes up fresh in each generation. Thank you. 